when working over there, uh, Monument said this person had to go out, came up to me and says, I know him. So, I said, if you know him, it's better for you to speak to him because there's a group of them, there's a group of 20 people, 20 older generation and 5, 10 younger generation downstairs and they're both getting into a bit of trouble. So he goes, what he does is, um, he walks him down the stairs and the guy starts looking at me and, I, and he disappears towards the front door area and the guy says to me, well, what's going on? And I said, uh, I said, I don't know, you have to speak to the guy who's taking you that way, to the doorway. And there's a couple of guys with him as well. So when we're, when we're downstairs, I said, if you go and speak to him at the door, he'll sort it all out. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't know what the problem is, mm -hmm. but I can reassure you, we'll sort whatever, need to, whatever needs to be sorted out. Then there's another guy over there, he says, what's going on? And he says, well, okay. He says, if you go to the door, so they will get scared. I wasn't scared. And then the guy who was taking him out disappeared. And he knew him. <laughs> <coughs> So, I could tell that the may, he may have been a little bit, uh, I don't know, I don't know, maybe a little bit frightened. So he looked at me and he said, what's going on, big man? And I said, well, okay, all right. So um, I was looking at him, he's a big guy, and there's a group of them as well. And, I, and uh, he was an aggressive, he was looking at me in an aggressive way. And I said, hey, are you a doorman, first of all? Because uh, uh, he's a big guy, a gold tough big guy. I thought, well, he goes, no. He goes, I'm rogue, man, I'm rogue. The rogue meaning that he's, um, he's a rogue, as in a bad boy. Yeah. So I looked at him and I went, okay then. He says, so what's happening then? And I said, okay. I said, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's happening. So I was looking at him. And I knew that he wanted some physical. I knew it. So I said, well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what's going to happen. He goes, what, what, what? And he's coming forward. And he says, in a moment, you are going to get close to me and me and you are going to end up no, having a scuffle mm -hmm. and he went yeah because he was happy with that because yeah. he wanted the scuffle didn't he? I knew he wanted the scuffle he wanted trouble so I turned around to him and I said alright I'll tell you what after the scuffle guess what's going to happen maybe I'll get hurt or maybe some of your guys are going to get hurt, or because we've got a team here and you've got a lot of lads here. But I'll tell you one thing, everything that's going to happen here afterwards is going to involve a CCTV recording of the incident, number one. And also, the police are going to be called. They looked at me anyway. And I said, everything's going to be relayed over to the police. They looked at me anyway. Mm. Because he's after trouble, but then I reminded him. You know, people get emotional, they don't think about the consequence. Yeah. So I said, I took him and he went, hmm. And I said, I'll tell you what, though. I'll let you back in upstairs. But if you kick off, you're coming straight back out. All right? Now, I don't know what's happened, but what I'm saying is, if I'll let you in, by all means, I'll let you back in. But if anything kicks off, you're coming back out straight away. Now, I let him back in. So Big Victor came up to me and he goes, what's going on, what's going on? I says, well, Big Victor's a bit bigger than me, he's about 25 stone. And I said, Vic, I've let him back in. I used to work with Big Vic a long time, for a long time. I said, Vic, I've let him in on the grounds of, if you want to, it's New Year, if you want to close the venue today, then we'll bring him out. It's no problem, I ain't got a problem with that. But I'll tell you one thing, he's got about 20 people with him. And they did have to because one of them would pull my earpiece out and I had to tell him. And uh, basically, uh, Vic said, Vcash, you made the right decision, call me Vcash. Vcash, you made the right decision. No problem, don't worry about it, Vcash. Now, don't forget the original statement that the manager had made, the owner of the venue. He has got to go. Well, I overruled him. And that's what you can do if you, because you are the conflict management expert after complete conflict management to do with health and safety. I feared my health and safety, number one, if he had gone off, I could have got all egotistical with him and, 
Yeah, 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 you are going out and it would have got nasty. So I chose to use a diplomatic method, but at the same time put fear into the guy. But if something did happen, you would be coming out. Now he came up to me upstairs and he went, thanks for letting me back in. And I uh, appreciate But I think he was a bit surprised because he thought everybody was scared of him. And I wasn't scared of him. We do all get scared sometimes, it's a good human, human emotion, but I didn't show fear. The more you don't show fear, the more you'll be in control. Yeah. Even if someone pulls a knife out and goes like that, you don't show fear, you're in control. So in terms of workplace violence, don't forget, your managers will say to you, I want him out. Add another raster guy <coughs> at the bar. Big gas, I want him out. Now! Shouting. So I went over to the bar. I said, before I, before I start to take him out, I better have a conversation with him. Because I always believe in having conversations with people. And I said, what seems to be the problem, sir? Is everything OK? And uh, he goes, no, there's no problem. Me and my wife just had a little argument, me and the missus. And we've resolved it. No problem, sir. And he goes, oh, why am I? He says, no, the barman. There's no problem. So I let him stay in. Do you understand what I'm saying? So in terms of measuring what you should do and what you shouldn't do, but sometimes some people will go in there guns blazing because they want him out, they'll just start dragging him out. That's going to cause a big scene. As soon as you get physical with people, your risks increase. It doesn't matter what you know. I know most of martial arts. It doesn't matter what you know. There's always going to be a big risk. As soon as you put your hands on them, there's a risk to you and to them. They could drop dead. You could get hit somewhere that you don't want to get hit and before you know it, you're done. There's, a, there's always someone who can catch you. <laughs> mm -hmm. And the only way of beating them is strategy. If you've got the right strategy and you surprise them with the element of surprise, you may get them. But if they surprise you, there's always going to be someone that can maybe try to or, you know, you don't know because all situations can go unpredictable. Two guys went out from Lancaster to London, one of them didn't come back, squared up to a guy, doesn't happen very often, squared up to a guy, the guy got a, uh, uh, and he's over a girl, dancing with a girl, the guy got the bottle and went whoosh, severed an artery straight away, dead. So you don't know every situation to do with physical or any physicality, there's, gonna, there's a high risk, a very high risk of you getting hurt or me getting hurt. So what I try and do is a conflict management way. And I says, you can go and tell the managers if you want. I don't care. You can tell the managers to come and see me. You can tell them that if you were to close the venue today, they will do that. But if you want to get all these out, there's about 20 of them, you're going to have to close the venue. Mm -hmm. And uh, we let them be. And I says to Big Dick, I said, you know this one guy? I said, with him. Let him be tonight, but no more again. So we can come in tonight, but next time he comes to the venue, no way. We're not going to let him in. 